So you may recall about a month ago, I had posted a video where I had reached out to multiple Photoshop experts to edit one of my favorite landscape photos from a trip to Moab by replacing the sky with another image of mine from Acadia National Park. Sort of like just a, a fun little experiment to see how a group of people might edit one of my landscape photos. And in the comment section of that video, I received well over 500 comments, and I think half of those comments came from people that were urging me to give Luminar 4 a test drive. And now I don't do any kind of real composite imagery at all, but based off of the sheer volume of comments of people that were mentioning Luminar 4, I would be remiss not to admit that I was uh, at least a little bit curious as to what all the fuss was about. And I guess the fine folks over at Skylum, I guess their ears were burning because they had reached out to me with a free trial and even decided to sponsor this week's video. So a big thanks to Skylum for that. Now, I've been a Lightroom and a Photoshop user from day one, ever since I got into landscape photography, and I've honestly been pretty reluctant to, uh, to test out any other editing platform since. But after using Luminar 4 for the past three, yeah, maybe about three weeks now, I can honestly say that it wasn't exactly 100% what I was anticipating. I was under the original impression that Luminar 4 was uh, this kind of standalone program, but I quickly found out that it could easily be used as a plugin for both Lightroom and Photoshop, which honestly, I personally find that to be very comforting just to know that I can implement this into my current post-processing workflow without having to alter everything. Now, at the end of this video, if you want to give Luminar 4 a try as well, Skylum was kind enough to provide a link in the description so you can get a seven-day free trial as well. And if you uh, want to purchase it at the end of that trial, you can use promo code MarkDenny at checkout to get $10 off. And that's a perfect segue as well into one of my favorite aspects about Luminar 4 is the fact that it's not a subscription-based pricing model. You don't have to pay for this every single month. You just purchase it one time and it's yours. So I think that's absolutely fantastic. So to jump right into it, this is the, uh, the, the, the library module. And you can see that these are the, the photographs that I have in Skylum or in Luminar 4 right now. And if I double click on a photograph, we can go ahead and start to edit it. So I'm gonna come over here to the essential section. This is one of the sections I found most beneficial for the way that I edit photos. And the way that I normally would do this, I would come up to the light section, and in the essence of time, let's just drop this down to cloudy. I would increase the exposure some. I would drop the highlights down quite a bit, and I'd boost the shadows a little bit. And this also has this kind of smart contrast feature, which I think is pretty interesting as well. And I think for this photograph, I'm gonna dial in a little bit of negative smart contrast, I think. And let's toggle this effect on and off. So this is where we started. And this is where we're at right now. And this is kind of like my normal workflow that I would go through. But I can reset all of that and I can come down here to AI Enhance. And this is kind of one of the big features with Luminar 4 is this artificial intelligence. So I'm not even going to, to pretend that I am smart enough to understand all the wizardry that goes on underneath the hood to make this artificial intelligence work. All I know is that it can read the photograph and it knows how to enhance things in the photograph. It knows what should be enhanced and what shouldn't be enhanced. And it's pretty cool and it's a lot of fun to play with. And it saves you a ton of time as well. So here's a great example, AI accent. If I just start to slide this all the way up, I'm gonna take it to 100. You can see exactly what it did right there. It. Uh, it impacted the highlights, it impacted the shadows, it added contrast to the photograph, it impacted saturation, vibrance. It did a lot with just a singular slider. And if we come down here to AI Sky Enhancer, if you wanna impact your sky a little bit more, I think this is really cool, it's only impacting the sky. So the artificial intelligence knows exactly what is the sky and what should be impacted and what should be left alone. So let's just kind of bring this back to a more manageable number, something a little bit more realistic. These are very powerful sliders, so you don't want to get too carried away. But in just this one section, these two sliders, we were able to go from this to this. From this before, straight out of camera, raw file, to this. And that is a huge time saver, just those two sliders. And I have found ever since I've been using Luminar 4 that that is now the first step that I use as far as my overall editing process. I don't even go to that light section anymore. I just go to the AI Enhance. So I think that's really cool. There's also this AI Structure section, which you can kind of add three dimension to areas where there is structure. It's kind of like clarity a little bit, but it adds a, a little bit of contrast and it just kind of makes areas a little bit more defined. And it's pretty interesting how it works as well. So I'm going to turn this up quite a bit so you can really see it. And of course you wouldn't want to go that high with it, but this is just a good uh, representation of what it's doing. So this is before 
and after. And if you need to boost it even further, you can definitely do that as well. But I'm gonna kind of bring this down to something a little bit more realistic, maybe to about right there. Let's toggle this on and off. So this is before and after, before and after. And then you have your color section, which you have your saturation and vibrant slider right here. You have the ability to select individual color channels. So if we wanna select blue, and just kind of reduce the blue in the sky a little bit, we can definitely do that. Maybe we wanna go for a moody, stormy or dramatic look. We can reduce the luminance of those storm clouds some. We can shift the hue a little bit. This, this is where we started and this is where we're at right now. And then there's this details enhancer. And what's really cool is Luminar 4 breaks it down between small details, medium size detail, and large size detail. So it's nice to have an individual slider for each size detail within an image. So, and I'll crank up the small size detail quite a bit so you can just easily see it. This is before and after, and you can really see it right through here, especially if I zoom in. So this is uh, before, after, before, and after. So that made a big difference right there. I'm gonna bring it down a little bit right through there. And then you have the, the sharpen slider as well. If you just wanna go ahead and sharpen the overall edges of your photograph, you can definitely do that. Now this next section right here, this landscape enhancer, I think this is really cool. And once again, this is one of those things that really makes Luminar 4 very unique and kind of sets it apart from any other type of editing platform out there. So there's this golden hour slider here, which I think is really neat. So if I just kind of crank this all the way up, you can see what it's doing and give it a second to process. And I'll turn this on and off. So this is before and after, before and after. So I think that is really great. It just kind of gives the illusion that that kind of golden light is hitting the landscape just to kind of exaggerate whether it's a sunrise uh, shoot that you're having to be photographing or maybe it's a sunset time. So I'm just gonna kind of bring that down just a little bit. And this foliage, I have a hard time saying that word, enhancer is pretty neat. You can kind of bring it up quite a bit. Let's change the hue. That's kind of fun to do, just kind of shift it over more. And then we can kind of bring it back to a more realistic value, something like that. And then let's toggle this entire landscape enhancer section on and off. So this is before and after, before and after. Now, one of the things that I think is absolutely fantastic about this section is this vignettes. Um, it has a very unique way that it does vignettes and it saves me a ton of time with the way that I do vignettes in both Photoshop and Lightroom. So if we come over here to the vignette section, and I'm gonna turn this all the way down here just so it's easy to see. And if we select choose subject, it gives you the ability to determine exactly where, what area you want the vignette to be around. So if we select this area, you can select this area, maybe down here, maybe this is where your main point of focus is, or maybe it's right here in the center of your frame. And I think that's absolutely fantastic. That will definitely save me a lot of time. And there's also this inner light feature which gives you the ability to increase the actual exposure on the inside of your vignette, which is really neat as well. I usually have to create two kind of, a, I guess, custom radial filters in order to create this, and that usually takes a couple minutes, and this is able to do it in a couple seconds. So once again, another big time saver right there. So I'm gonna go ahead and close this down, and let's just check out where we started. So this is the before, this is the raw file straight out of camera, and after. And there's also this really cool before and after slider. I love playing with this, where you can just kind of drag it back and forth to see exactly what you've done to the overall photograph. And I think that's great. So that's a huge difference in a relatively short amount of time. Now, the next section that I found most beneficial is the creative section. And this is where you can, well, you get pretty creative. You can add in um, additional skies. You can do the AI sky replacement. And once again, I don't know exactly how it all works, but it works pretty well. And it's a ton of fun to play with as well. So I'm gonna come over here to the creative tab. Let's pick this image right here, which is another image from Moab. And I really like this photograph, but I never shared it because the sky was just completely bland and it really ruined the overall photograph. And there is some light editing already done to this image, but let's just jump right up here to the AI sky replacement and select sky selection. And you can pick any of these different sky selections. You can even load your own custom sky image. Let's just pick this one right here, dramatic sunset. That looks amazing. That actually looks extremely realistic too with this scenario with the way the light is hitting this mountain. Let's select another one. Let's go to dramatic sunset three. Boom. 
do Dramatic Sunset 4. I think this is the one that I like the best for this particular image. Yes, I think this looked incredible. And what's really neat is you can select this relight scene and it's gonna help you to kind of match the foreground with the overall uh, sky. So since this sky is definitely a, a setting sun, let's go ahead and um, just kind of relight the scene, just kind of dim it a little bit. There's also the sky defocus, so you can actually soften up the focus on the overall sky just to make it even more realistic. I'm just gonna kind of bring that down just a touch right there. You can increase the, the sky temperature, which I think is very beneficial. You can increase the exposure of it as well. And what's a lot of fun is this sun rays section. So you can hit place sun center, and I'm gonna put it right over here where the sun is. And then you can crank it up like that. Now that's definitely an overkill, but I wanted you to really be able to see it at home. You can do all kinds of uh, impact in so many different ways. The sun rays length, the overall look. I was definitely gonna kind of dial it back a little bit because I just wanna add just a little bit of glow right through there. Something like that I think looks pretty good. Maybe just kind of bring the sun rays length down just a touch. And something else right here, this matte look. Now this is a one of those things where it, it, it is a pretty popular trend, this matte look, you might have heard it called fading the shadows, where it just kind of gives that, that soft kind of painterly look. And Luminar 4 has an entire section dedicated just to it. So if we come up here and turn the amount slider up, we can introduce a little bit of fade as well. Maybe not quite that much. Turn this on and off. So this is before and after. And what's so interesting about this is when a lot of times whenever you achieve this look, you do it by reducing contrast, but there's actually a contrast slider built into this section. So I think that's fantastic. So if it starts to begin to look a little bit too flat, you can introduce a little bit of contrast and still retain that matte look. So this is before and after. And then mystical. Mystical is a little bit like an Orton effect. Uh, once again, trying to uh, create that, kind of soften the, the overall look, to, to get away from that kind of overly digital or crunchy look. Mystical is a way to just soften the overall image and give it that kind of ethereal feeling. So we can kind of, and I'll turn it up a lot so you can really get the effect of it. Maybe not quite that much, somewhere right around there. And we kind of increase the shadow some so the shadows don't get too blocked up and turn this on and off. So this is before and after, and that's really coming together. And then there's this glow as well, which is a lot like the Orton effect. We can do a soft focus bright and kind of turn this up and you can see what it's doing to the overall photograph. That's definitely a little bit too much. And then you also have soft focus, soft glow. So there's multiple different ways to create that kind of soft ethereal look. With, with, with landscape photography, the Orton effect and softening photos for that kind of dreamy look is a very popular approach. And I think I use some type of an Orton effect on just about every one of my photos. So it's a lot of fun to have so many different ways to create that. And if you want the actual Orton effect, that's built in too, right here in the portrait section. Whoops, here's the portrait section. We can select the Orton effect and just drag it up. And you can see exactly what it's doing. And there's two different types. I think I liked typed two the best for this one. And I'm gonna dial it back a little bit right there and turn this on and off. So this is before and after, very subtle, before and after. I'm gonna shut this down. And the overall transformation of this photograph is absolutely incredible. You might not even remember exactly what it used to look like, but I'm gonna come up here to this before and after toggle button, and here it is. Before and after, before, and after, what a massive transformation. And here's that before and after slider. Super cool, I absolutely love that one. And then the, the last section is the actual pro section. And this is where the more advanced sliders are. So for the more kind of granular areas of your photograph that you wanna impact, you can do that within this professional section. So let's pick a different image. Where's the one that I wanted to use? Right down here, I believe. Is this the raw file? Yep. So I am going to come over here. We've already selected Pro. Actually, you know what? I'm gonna come up here to the Essential section first, and let's go over here to the AI Enhance, just to give a real quick edit on here. Pull that up, pull the Sky Enhancer up, AI Structure, give that a little bit of a boost with the boost, <laughs> and then turn that on and off, and let's see how we, this is where we started, and this is where we ended up right now. So before, and after, and just a few quick sliders. I'm gonna come down to the pro section right here. And under advanced contrast, I think it's great that you have the ability to impact contrast with highlights, midtones, and shadows separately. So we can go over here 
and increase the highlights contrast. And if I swing this back and forth, you can see it's only impacting the highlights. You can do the same thing with the midtones and the same thing with the shadows. So I'm gonna bring the shadow contrast up some. I don't think the midtone contrast needs to be impacted on this photo too much. And there's also this dodge and burn feature, which I think is great. You can simply hit start painting. And if you want to lighten an area, you just select lighten. You can use the bracket keys to increase or decrease the size of your brush. I have it up at 100 just to make it easier to see. You can just make a couple of quick passes right through here, through these waves, maybe something like that. This is definitely just really quickly done here. And let's just turn down the overall amount there and toggle this on and off. So this is before and after. And if we wanted to dodge a certain, I'm sorry, to burn a certain area, if we wanted to darken an area, you just select darken at the top and say maybe we wanted to uh, paint over this area right through here. We can definitely do that as well. And when we toggle the effect on and off, you'll definitely be able to see that area darken. So this is before and after, before and after. So it's pretty neat to actually have that dodge and burn feature built right in there. It works as advertised and it's a lot of fun to play with as well. Now, as far as the actual split toning goes, this is something that I found to be pretty interesting as well. Of course, you can um, split tone the, uh, the highlights by just pulling up the, uh, the saturation of a specific hue, and that works great just like that. Or, let me go ahead and pick the specific one that we wanna go with. You could come over here to Edit Mask, and let's say that we wanted to use a brush. And what this does is it actually gives you the ability to paint the split toning on only in the area that you want the split toning to be uh, applied. And I think this is absolutely fantastic because it's one of my biggest gripes with Lightroom is the fact that you cannot get selective with where you apply your split toning. It's either split toning the highlights or split toning the shadow, but you don't have the ability to, to get very localized with where you want to put it. So having that ability I think is absolutely fantastic as well. So that's just a, a real quick rundown of uh, the, the many features of Luminar 4. I could easily probably go on for another hour about all of the, the power that is packed into this uh, photo editing platform. So uh, I definitely hope that you were able to get some helpful information out of this. If you're not familiar with Luminar 4, like I mentioned at the beginning of the video, definitely check out the, uh, the link in the description below for a, a free seven day trial edit with some of your photos, see if it's something that might save you a little bit of time. It's definitely a unique platform versus um, a lot of other things that are out on the market today. And it's also a ton of fun to play with, which at the end of the day is probably the most important part of it all. Now, if you have any questions, definitely leave those in the comments section below and I guarantee I will get back in touch with you. And if you enjoyed this week's video, if you could give it that thumbs up and subscribe to the channel if you're not subscribed already. And as always, I really do appreciate you watching this week's video and I will see you all next Wednesday. Bye.